The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Welcome everybody to the Friday edition of Harvest. We've got 10-time Grammy winner C.C. Winans has ushered God's people into his presence for more than 30 years. She has no plans of slowing down. Valerie chats with the singer about her latest project. We mean C.C.'s latest project, not Valerie's. And <laughs> former NFL lineman Braxton Cave returns to the show with more about faith, football, and fulfilling God's purpose with new opportunities. How you doing, everybody? Glad to have you around. The whole gang here today, Stefan, Valerie, Chuck, don't get used to it. It won't <laughs> happen very often. Uh, I know one thing you're used to on Fridays, you're used to the, the Academy Award winning segment that we like to call <laughs> Choose Your News, uh, but it's on hiatus today. Instead, I'm introducing a new segment to the show that's called Survey Says. Uh, okay. We have, we have a, a graphic Gallup, song yet? No graphic, no song, uh, not even a waltz. Uh, we do have, though, a survey here from the folks at Gallup. Okay. And the question is, reasons people attend church. What is the number mm. one reason that people attend church? Valerie, would you like to... Well, the correct... I, the reason I attend church mm -hmm. is to grow closer to God, to get to know Him, and to that... My number one reason. But I could imagine other people attend church to meet other people. Okay, so you're saying uh, for the social aspect yes. of it. Social activities, only 49% attend church for social mm -hmm. activities. Okay. So about, about half of the yeah. congregation. I, I would think the, you know, the top of mind would be because of the, the music, the worship, or because of the child care and the children's ministry. Choir or other spiritual music, only 44% of Protestants and only 29% of Catholics. Uh -huh. The number one reason people are attending church these days, according to the Barna Group and the good folks at Gallup, sermons that teach about scriptures. Wow. 83% of Protestants and 82% of Catholics say that's what they want uh, from their church. That's good mm -hmm. to hear. That is good to hear. Preaching on scripture and its relevance ranked above factors like kids programs, community outreach, and social activities. Churchgoers focus on Sunday sermons as a hopeful indicator for pastors. Now, it can also put more pressure on pastors to make sure that their sermons engage their churchgoers because, get this, Why? Valerie, nearly four in 10 practicing millennial Christians will fact check any sermon claims <laughs> on Google. On the fly. Well, I think that's good. I think that's a great idea. Well, on the fly, maybe not. In the pew. But, right, in yeah. the pew. But I think that that's how you grow in your faith and you know it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I have always felt that it was we shouldn't leave it up to the pastor or the speaker to, um, to do all of the work. How are you going to grow in your faith if you don't open that Bible for yourself mm -hmm. and get to know the Lord? So what do you think about that? Well, I think that's fine. I think anything that teaches you to dive in, like you said, and, and delve into the material is good. Here, here's a note for all of us who think that either people tune in to watch us or <laughs> if you're a pastor, think that people show up to watch you. Dynamic religious leaders, 50%. That's, really? That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all who are showing up for the dynamic religious leader. Well, number one was a sermon that teaches about scripture mm. and number two, a sermon that teaches you how to put religion into your everyday life. Yeah. Very that's kind of what I like. See. That was kind of like what I meant by why I go to church. Yeah. You know, I, that's really interesting that millennials, though, will fact check for you right yeah. there, then and there. So if you're a millennial <laughs> watching this show, you can go ahead and fact check us, but make sure you hit us up on the Book of Faces, the Twitter machine, and live at lacy.com. Up next, the Grammy Award winning singer CC Winans is with us here on Harvest. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. 
The gastrointestinal tract is one of the most fascinating systems in the human anatomy. It powers the body with energy by converting food into fuel. To keep your GI tract functioning strongly, order the new Restoration Pack by making healthy choices. For just $59.95, you get certified organic inulin, probiotic blend plus, liquid multigels, and mineral concentrate plus free shipping. To order, go online or call 1-800-965-2345. Your body will thank you. C.C. Winans is undoubtedly one of the most recognized names in Christian music. The 10-time Grammy Award winner combines both thought-provoking lyrics with masterful instrumentation to reach generations of listeners. I recently caught up with the singer and songwriter to find out what she's been up to lately. Okay, so let's let's get right into your new project. It's called Let Them Fall in Love. Tell me about it. It's it's an awesome project. I'm glad to be back, but um, that's my prayer is that when people hear it, they will be uplifted and that their hearts will be turned towards God, that they will receive encouragement and inspiration. And I, I think I think it's gonna do that. Okay, so do some of the lyrics come from, where do they come from during your time away? I mean, you've been busy. I mean, just because you haven't been in the studio does not yeah. mean you haven't been busy. No, I've been busy. I've still been singing and traveling, but also my husband and I started a church called Nashville Life in Nashville, Tennessee. So busy with ministry. And the songs come from, some of them are songs that, 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 that are testimonies to me, what God has been. We have a song entitled, He's Never Failed Me Yet. And so I love to share my faith with people. That's really what music has been for me all of my career, is sharing my faith, what God has meant to me in, in some of the most challenging times. We have a song entitled, Never Have to Be Alone. So we want to encourage people that God is with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And so songs come from different things that we've experienced, but also songs of, of scripture that will guarantee to encourage people to bring healing where there's where there's hurt or where there's um, brokenness you know it's the power of the gospel it's the power of music well starting a church and you know going from singing to pastoring a church what was that like I mean <laughs> I'm sure it gave I you a still lot of adjusting <laughs> and it must have given you a lot of writing material um well yes but you know I've always been in ministry but now doing it like this we're making disciples so it's a privilege it's an honor my husband and I were having an awesome time it's non-stop so it's a whole different level of ministry but um I am just so grateful that God counted us worthy to do this. You know? So when a person listens to Let Them Fall In Love, what are you hoping to accomplish? What what do you want them to walk away I with? I want them to fall in love. Mm -hmm. Not just with the CD or the music, but I want them to fall in love with, with Jesus. I want them to fall in love with Christ because that is the secret to life. That's the secret to abundant life. Mm -hmm. Allowing Him to come into your heart, but actually falling in love with Him, that means He's number one, He's first, you know, if you put Him first, the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything else will be added. I want them to know that's really, really true. It's just not a scripture, but it's, but it's life and it breathes life. Well, how does this project differ from your others? Well, mm -hmm. this one is wrapped up a little bit differently. I'm doing mm -hmm. styles of music that I've never done before. Like, you know? like it's kind of the 60s and oh, okay. 40s so, so sound. No, hip -hop, right? no, no, no hip hop. <laughs> I, did, I didn't go joking. there. <laughs> never know. But um, no, it's it's a live orchestra, all live oh, music. Yeah. Um, and so you have a lot of different styles. So I, I got a chance to do some things that I never did before. So it's fun, mm -hmm. it's a journey, put your seatbelt on, and I believe you're gonna enjoy the ride. I love this title, Hey Devil. Tell me hey about that Hey Devil, <laughs> wow. This one tells you, hey devil, get behind me. Right. You know, it reminds us of the authority that we have in Jesus Christ that I think a lot of times as believers, we really forget. And I brought my sisters in to help me sing this song, the Clark Sisters from Detroit. And so this is a lot of fun, but it's powerful. And uh, yeah, Jesus finished it. So Satan is defeated, he's under our feet, and we have to remind ourselves of that. Okay, do you have like an anthem on the CD or something that's extremely worshipful? Um, ooh, yes, we do. Uh, Marvelous mm -hmm. is, is extremely worshipful. But when you said anthem, I went to the song, Peace from God. 
It's a song that our nation needs to hear now. Right. You know, we need peace, and if we want peace, it's only going to come from one source, and that is God. You know, the Bible tells us, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then he would hear from heaven. He would heal our land. He would forgive our sins, should I say, and then heal our land. And so peace from God is just a reminder that that's where peace comes from. And that's what I'd imagine you're trying to do, point people back to the one who can give us, yes. you know, the peace that we need, the yes. Prince of Peace. That's right, the Prince of Peace. Fall in love with Jesus so you can experience that peace that surpasses all understanding. Anything else you'd like to tell us about? I know you um, have teamed up and partnered with Talbert's uh, store, clothing store, yeah. for a Dress for Success program. Dress for Success program, which I, they've been out here doing incredible things for women for years, and I didn't know about it. So I am so honored to be a part uh, of this um, cause to prepare women for the workplace. I think it's awesome. So I want to encourage everybody to look it up. I know they featured it in the old magazine, but Talbert's Dress for Success um, cause is, a, is something that I want all the women to find something beautiful, go donate it, and be a blessing to somebody else. You know, Sissy, I remember once I interviewed you and you had done a commercial for a toothpaste commercial, because yeah. everybody knows you have the smile the size of Texas. <laughs> What else is next for you? Are you going to do any more commercials, television, film? I don't film? know. I don't know. You know, I'm open. I'm open. Um, but my life is really, really busy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a co-pastor now, and that's my life. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. Uh, and now I'm an artist again out here doing music. But, but if the right thing comes, and it's something that God is going to receive glory from, then, then I'll be willing to, to give it a try. And I'm going to let you have the last say. I mean, for someone who's out there, needs that peace, needs to fall in love with Jesus, what would you like to say? Oh, fall in love with him today. God loves you right where you are. All you have to do is ask him into your heart and he'll come in and he will change your life. You never have to be alone. It's my The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Do you long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the Garden Tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. Hello, everybody. Today I thought we would do something a little different and go a bit more in depth on one of the stories that I shared with you earlier this week, and that is the attack by Islamic State on the monastery of St. Catherine's in the Sinai. I have been there multiple times, and what I remember most about my visits there is that it is so still and quiet. Also, I remember how the Bible describes the mountain burned with fire. And when you're up there on it, you really have the sense of that because of the barren rock as one wanders the mountain as Moses did when he received the Ten Commandments. And then, of course, there is the Library of St. Catherine's, one of the most celebrated in the world, one which ancient documents say rivaled the fame 
of the lost Library of Alexandria on Egypt's coast. Now, this attack by Islamic State, with it comes the question, is the sixth century monastery in jeopardy? Well, Egypt will boost security and they will protect the monastery, but in a way, I'm not too concerned. That's because of the Bedouin who live in the region, who are Muslim, and they have long lived in support of the monastery as the Christian pilgrims who visit there are the Bedouins' main source of income. They will hunt down the Islamic State fighters and do to them what they have done to others. Nonetheless, I want to finish on a positive note. Let this serve as a reminder that your good prayers for the Christians of the region as a whole, they are very much appreciated. Please continue to pray. On yesterday's harvest, you were with us yesterday, right? We talked with former Notre Dame and NFL player Braxton Cave about the role that Faith played in his pro football career. Today, we'll talk about the transition to the business world and the message he can share with those who want to follow in his footsteps. So you get done with football, you decide, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you have to say, oh my gosh, I got a wife and a child and I got to get a paycheck that pays for all this. So how in the world did you wind up at this place you're at now, Lippert Components? Yeah, so my, my goal was always play 10 years in the NFL, come back, open a training facility and, and work with the, the local students. Uh, obviously, I didn't make it that far in. Uh, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, what direction. Uh, have a good friend that is a sales guy, Tyler Nine for Lippert Components. Um, he's like, hey, if you want, you want to dive into the RV market, let me know. And so I said, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And about two minutes later, got a call from, <laughs> from Jason Lippert, the CEO of the company, and went in that day, sat down in his office for about two hours. And, you know, we share the same faith, huge faith guy, goes to the same church as me, um, talked about my background, and we talked about golf. So um, I was hooked. <laughs> I, I love all the things that he stands for and things he pushes for the company. And uh, it's been a great transition for me. And it's great that you have that opportunity to work in that environment with uh, you know, that kind of uh, atmosphere. But when it comes down to the brass tacks, you're managing actually a, a, a production plant, a manufacturing mm -hmm. facility. So right. how do you see Faith Integrate with the, just the common relationships in the day in, day out with all of the people that are working uh, basically under your supervision? Well, you know, it's, it's coming up having that foundation in faith. Um, I can't tell you how many conversations I have with people every day and the problems they have going on and just, you know, finding common ground, finding a solution. Um, you know, it's helped me coming from football, being in a locker room with a, the dynamic there, you know, you get all kinds of kinds. Uh, same in, in production manufacturing, it's you know, there's 800 people in our plant and you know, people from all different walks of life and it's finding that common ground and, mm -hmm. and being able to have that influence and, and show people that you know, I'm not going to sacrifice anything for, for my walk of life and my faith and, and it rubs off on people. Mm -hmm. They want to be around that. Well, and you've got a chance to still be a, a great role model because there's a lot of kids who grow up in the area that you lived in who, who look up to you. Mm -hmm. And as you go out and speak at different organizations like Fellowship of Christian Athletes, mm -hmm. I know you've got a message you want to share with them. What is it? You know, two of them, two of the biggest points, uh, what I stress to any kid is high school can be really hard. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's just in today's day and age, but kids can be mean. Um, it's, it's easy to slip and, and fall down the wrong path. Um, so the, f the first thing I tell everyone is you're the average of the top five people you hang around with to mm -hmm. spend most of your time with. Mm -hmm. um, and if you really you know, sit down and look at who you're spending that time with, you'll see that, yeah, you have some friends who are, are doing some things that maybe aren't up to your standard, and then you have some friends that um, you strive to be like they are. Um, and it's so true. So constantly trying to push towards you know, surrounding yourself with the right people, 
sometimes it's it's really hard to walk away from friendships where that you've had for a long time. But if if they're not on the same path as you, it, it's it's never going to get you to where you want to go. Uh, the second thing I tell them is just dive in. You you can't stand on the sidelines and be part of the game. Um, you know I was I failed at that for a while. Um, was always involved in church. Um, felt like I was on the team, but I, I didn't dive in as much as I could have. And I would walk away from some things and be like, man, I just wish I would have, I wish I would have dove in. I wish I would have done that. Um, and once I finally started doing that, it felt so much better. Um, I was able to, to learn a lot more, to have a lot more influence, and it just it helped me tremendously. Uh, you kind of mentioned it in, in quick passing, you know, with the transition that took place, realizing that you know, your plan of being in the NFL for 10 years and then uh, kind of giving back through a training facility and, and whatnot, and, and the change that took place, just if we could go back to that moment with you and your family, how did you, what were some of the things that helped you process making that distinctive change? Because when we face a, you know, a, a, a redirection of our life and, and what we think we will be doing into mm -hmm. you know, another plan, uh, it, could be, it could be a harrowing experience. Right, you know, it's great to be able to have some influence and to be able to shape and mold you know, kids who um, may not be on the right path, want to get on the right path, uh, what do I need to do? from a faith standpoint, a family standpoint, athletic standpoint. Um, it's great to be able to get them at a young age because you can set that foundation. But when I was looking at it, um, in this area especially, it's, it's hard to make a living when that's what you're doing. And obviously that would played a big part into, um, big role into my decision. So in this area, what's the next best thing? Um, the RV market. It's, mm -hmm. This is the RV capital of the world. Um, business is booming right now uh, what a better place to to get involved in, in, and try to make a positive influence a right positive and you're influence. still able to give back obviously uh, regardless of, right. of what your vocation is yeah no definitely I as any free time I get I love to get back involved in in the local schools and help out where I can um, right now it's just been crazy yeah, uh, yeah. My, my three month old daughter um, <laughs> my wife prefers that I be home oh, as much as possible at, at this point in time, which has been awesome for me. I, I am curious about one thing we didn't really get to in yesterday's show. We talked about you going from Penn to Notre Dame. When you went from Notre Dame, which is a, a really faith-based place, mm -hmm. to the NFL, which is not, what <laughs> was that transition like? Did, did Were you able to find people of faith in the NFL, or was it a little more difficult? Uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, you don't have like that family um, atmosphere in an mm -hmm. NFL locker room just because, you know, a lot of guys get close with someone. The next day they come in, their their locker is empty. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you kind of learn to to get along, to make it work. But some guys don't really get too close. Um, every team I was on, though, I, I made sure to get involved with uh, the the group Bible study. Uh, when we were with the New England Patriots, my wife and I were in a couple study, which was awesome. Uh, so there was always opportunities. Um, we never really found a church while we were bouncing from team to team. Um, so we continued to watch GCC online and mm -hmm. and do the the weekly Bible study, and and, and that was great for us. Um, so definitely had the the faith accountability there. Mm -hmm. Well, even though you didn't get to that career goal that you had for yourself on the post-it note, you're still doing some great things, and we look forward you, to you doing a lot of great things within our community in Thank the you. years to come. Braxton Cave joining us on the Harvest Show to connect with Braxton. We invite you to go to our website, which is harvest-tv.com, and we'll get you a link to how to get in contact with him. And be sure to like us on Facebook to get exclusive content. We're right back with prayer requests after this. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples. He was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. 
LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Pastor Charles joining us right now with an update from LaCie's Prayer Line. You can connect with Prayer Line any time of the day or night, holidays, weekend. It does not matter. We've got great staff and volunteers there at 1-800-365-3732. And Pastor, being Friday, it's a good Friday. It's a praise report. It is a good Friday, right? <laughs> not the one before Easter, but all the Fridays are good because we got praise reports today. Yes. For instance, we got Sarah in Louisiana. Sarah says, you prayed uh, for a tumor in my husband's nose. Hmm. And the next time he went to the doctor, it proved it was gone. Praise God. Praise God. God. And then George in Louisiana says, George says, I had a sore on my ankle the size of a coin ever since Hurricane Katrina. Hmm. He says, when wow. you all prayed for it, and a few days later, it was gone. So it was many years that she had yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right, Called right. in for prayer. Praise That's God. right. And then finally, Jerry she uh, calls us from Texas, and she says, you prayed for my son to get a job in order to help me in the home. So in the meantime, I got an unexpected check for $1,118.95, <laughs> which was just enough to cover a specific bill. You know, so you know that's got to be God, right? God, God knows yeah. where we live, doesn't yeah, he? He does, does know where we live. And thank God that you are calling in with your praise reports. Mm -hmm. We are so grateful that you do so. That's Pastor right. Charles, quickly, you need photos for the wall of love photos. upstairs in that's the chapel. that's right. Get them in, folks. Get them in so we can get them on the wall. We go up there every single week. Mm -hmm. And we lay hands on those pictures and we pray over them. And I can actually remember some of the prayer requests when I see them. Mm, great mm -hmm. point of contact. And you can great. send those photos in. Uh, if you email prayer at .com. maybe you've got a prayer request today or a praise report to share. Maybe you just want to send your family photo yeah. in. You can include it as an attachment on that email. Or as always, you can send it in to our street address here, 61300 Ironwood Road in South Bend, Indiana, zip code. 46614. Thanks for joining us on Harvest today. We'll see you on Monday. When Dr. Lester Summerall founded La Cie Broadcasting decades ago to tell hurting people about Jesus, he knew they would need prayer. So he opened the International Prayer Line. Today, tens of thousands of callers a month receive life changing prayer from our dedicated volunteers. But we need your help to expand the work of this vital ministry. Won't you consider partnering with Prayer Line with a monthly gift of $25? Your donation will help us reach the world. Call today. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.